Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeff Askoff. And in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the full editing process for one of my photographs and also one of Sarah's. And I'm also going to be showing you a neat trick which I've been using for over the past few weeks, which has completely transformed the way that I use Lightroom. Now, when it comes to editing, we have two very different ideas on how much the edit should actually affect the photograph. Now, I've always believed that the edit is part of the overall artistic process, where Sarah, on the other hand, feels that editing is there to complement the photograph, to kind of get rid of any digitalness that the image might have and to make it more film like, because that's the kind of look that she likes. This photograph of Sarah's was taken uh, a few years ago in Cambridge. This is basically a scene just outside a shop that sells ice cream on one of the back streets in Cambridge. We have the shoppers here, we have the main focus of the image, which is the kid, and we have a secondary focus, which is this kid walking away. Now, in terms of editing this photograph, if you are a subscriber to this channel, you will already be aware of this, but I have two rules when it comes to converting color images to black and white. The first rule is that the color photograph has to be a good color photograph to start with. You can't polish a turd by turning it to black and white, okay? It doesn't work that way. If you've got a poor color photograph in terms of the tone, in terms of the white balance, in terms of the exposure, that will give you a really poor black and white. Everything needs to be right before you convert the image. And if that means you have to adjust the image to get it right before you convert to black and white, then that's what you have to do. Now, in this particular case, this image is absolutely fine out of camera. Um, we tend to favor using a daylight white balance within the actual cameras. Now, when it comes to converting to black and white, my second rule is that you should always use a profile and not a preset to do this. Presets are far too inconsistent. You can get a preset which looks absolutely amazing on one photograph and then you apply it to another photograph and it looks absolutely rubbish. Okay, that's just the nature of presets and how they're made. A much better way of converting to black and white is to use a profile and Adobe give us one. In our profile menu here, it is called Adobe Monochrome and you can just click on that and you have an instant black and white conversion. It's nothing very exciting, but it gets the job done and it's miles away in terms of quality from using a preset. Now, because this video is about how I process artwork, I'm gonna be using one of my silver chrome profiles and I'll leave a link to these in the description below. Now for Sarah's work, we always use P32, which is this one, and it gives me a very good starting point to the photograph. So this is our basic conversion. I'm just going to do a very, very quick tone curve adjustment just to bring down the highlights and upper mid-tones. You know, that's where I'm happy starting this edit. Now, the first thing I want to do is zoom in to the main part, which is this here, and I can immediately see it looks a little bit digital. And the reason for that is because Adobe insists on adding sharpness to everything. So I'm just gonna turn that off and that will help immensely. Now, while I'm here, I can see that this part of his hand is a little bit light and we could do a little bit more modeling on his face and maybe bring the ice cream cone out a little bit more. Now to do this, I'm gonna use a brush and I'm gonna use the curves tool within the brush mask. Now to apply the brush mask, you can either click K on your keyboard. I click a mouse button because I have the keyboard shortcut applied to that mouse button. So I'm just going to click on my mouse button. You can probably hear it and up comes the brush tool. Now let's have a look at this hand first. You can use masks if you wanted to. I mean, I got excited about masks when they first came out. Since then, I just feel that they're just too clinical. They don't give you that kind of hand finished feel that you get from using brushes. So I'm gonna go down to the curves tool and I'm just going to bring down those highlight areas. If you're unsure, where those highlight areas are, you can use the target adjustment tool and you can just bring those highlight areas down that way. Either way, it doesn't matter, whatever you prefer to use. Okay, so let's go into the ice cream. I'm just gonna paint a little brush on the ice cream. Now I wanna add some more contrast to this. I'm gonna move the highlight point to the left. Okay, until it just touches the edge of the information that's shown in the actual graph. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pull down the shadows a little bit. Okay, and if we turn that on and off, you can see it's very subtle, but it works really well. So I'm just gonna do the side of his face. Again, just a brush in here. Go back to my curves panel. You can use the target adjustment tool. We can bring that down a little bit. 
Okay, cool. Now I'm just going to zoom back out again. Now this lad over here, he needs some adjustment. So I'm going to zoom back in. And you can see he's got this kind of digitalness to his face as well. I'm going to take a, another brush, I'm just going to paint in over his face here. And then I'm just going to go down to below my curves tool and use clarity. And the clarity will just get rid of that. You don't want to overuse it, otherwise it looks really artificial. And I can also use a little bit of dehaze as well. And now if we look at the comparison to the kid in the background, they're much better balanced in terms of their actual tone in their faces. If I turn this on and off, you can see how mushy that looks and now how kind of more, I don't know, 3D, I guess it looks now. The other thing I want to do while I'm here is just take down his hand. Okay, cool. And I just want to just take down the edge of his nose. His nose has just caught a little bit too much highlight. So I'm just going to do that as well. There we go. Now looking around the rest of the photograph, I'm just going to darken the edges down now and emphasize the kid in the middle. Okay, so I'm just going to do something like that. We're just going to take our curve again and just darken it. Not too much to about there, I think. And then take another brush and I'm just going to go back over this area here. Lovely. That's really nice. Okay, that's cool. Let's move the masking panel out of the way for a minute. We can see the highlight areas here which are a little bit distracting so what I'm going to do here is take another brush I'm just going to just roughly paint over these highlight areas and then just take those down a little bit as well okay that's pretty cool what I want to do is add some grain to this image to kind of finish it off so I'm going to go into my presets panel here so much with these masking panels you don't know what to do with it where shall I put this masking panel oh we put it in there can we Oh, there we go. I didn't know you could do that. I've learned something today. Fantastic. Right. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so I genuinely didn't know you could do that. That's something I've learned on this video. Let's go to our grain preset. I'm just going to zoom in. And I'm just going to use medium grain, which is Sarah's preference. She likes medium grain. So that's what we're going to use. And as you can see, it gives a very nice film like feel to the image. Overall, it needs a little bit more contrast. Going back to our original basic panel edit, we can actually see that already the tone curve has been used. So if we wanted to adjust the contrast, we could just adjust this original tone curve, but then it's affecting everything else from that point forward. A better way to do it is to apply a tone curve after everything has been done. And the best way of doing that is with an adjustment mask. So basically to make an adjustment mask, all you need to do is go to the masking panel, create a new mask, go to luminance, or you can press shift and Q with your eyedropper tool, just go over the picture. And as long as this graph here says zero, zero and 100, 100, you basically have an empty mask. Okay. Now, if you save that mask as a preset, okay, so I've already done it a few times here with various people that I've been teaching, but this is where it sits. So if we get rid of mask 10, okay. And then if we apply our mask adjustment layer, okay, we effectively have a new adjustment layer with a tone curve. So we can actually just add more contrast without affecting all of the other adjustments that you've made to get to this particular point. And this is really valuable if you have to change the contrast slightly for different things like social media or for publication. Um, to have the final mask available just to be able to adjust contrast or whatever you're going to adjust is absolutely invaluable. And to be honest, it's really changed the way that I use Lightroom now. Before I would have to go into Photoshop and mess around with curves and layers and so on in Photoshop to get, you know, any sort of subtle change to the image, but now I don't have to do that.
Okay, so looking at this picture here, this one's mine. It was taken a couple of weeks ago in Blackpool and there is a video that accompanies this picture where you can actually see me taking this photograph and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Now, my editing style when it comes to my own work is a lot more aggressive, if that's the right word, than what it is with Sarah's. So I'm just going to, first of all, I'm just going to straighten this. 21 millimeters shooting from the hip. You don't always get it as straight as you like. Okay, so I'm just going to, maybe a little bit more. It's always so subjective, you know, do you keep the wide angle distortion in or do you try and correct it? You know, let me know in the comments. Do we like the winner grand kind of tilt to the image or do you prefer it straighter? Just let me know in the comments. Now this is shot with a Leica monochrome camera and monochrome files straight out of camera are particularly flat. And one of the problems that people have is when they buy a monochrome, they immediately think they're gonna get amazing black and white quality out of the camera. And you have to work at the image as much as you would do if you started off with a color camera. So this file is quite flat. And what I'm gonna do here is change the profile to one of my silver chrome profiles. A couple of my silver chrome profiles work really well with monochrome cameras. Um, they are American Idol and they are P32, okay? And I'm gonna use P32 for this particular image. Now, P32 works slightly differently to how it works with the color image, but even so, it gives quite a nice starting point and it's a world away from the flat file that comes out of the camera. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna zoom in. Looking at the image here, we've got this digitalness a little bit. You don't get as much digitalness with the monochrome camera as you do with a color camera, but it's still there a little bit, which we need to address. Okay, and I want to bring her face out. I want to darken this area down here because it's just a little bit too light, but I want to overall add some depth to the image, some contrast, and to make it a little bit more my style. I'm gonna start first of all with, as I did with the color image, taking off this awful sharpening. Let's have a look at this lady here. So I'm just going to take a brush. I'm just going to paint in over her face. Now I'm going to use clarity here and I use clarity a lot with my edits because it just gives that grittiness to the actual structure of the face. Okay. And it works really well with my particular style and the same with this kid here. I'm going to use the same adjustment on the kid as well. So they're balanced. So I'm just going to repaint over his face as well. And immediately you can see that this, digitalness is starting to disappear. I'm just gonna darken down the cartons here by using a curve adjustment. And again, I don't worry about the, the whole of the curve being affected by that one adjustment. It makes it look much more natural. It makes all the gradation of tone from highlight into upper mids, lower mids. It makes it all really smooth and seamless. If you were to use masks to do this, it would look very harsh. And it's the main reason why I've gone away from masks. I'm also gonna take down her arm here as well. Okay, cool. And maybe gonna take down his hand and part of the stroller here as well. Okay, and his knee. Just so they're not bright areas in the frame. And immediately looking behind them, we've got this figure here. So I'm just gonna create another brush. And I'm just gonna drop that down. Zoom back out. Now I want to add a little bit more contrast to this image. It's, the image is a little bit on the, the flat side. I'm just going to go and just check my black point. I know I've got some black in here, but not a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that to the left and get some blacks in the frame. And I'm just gonna do the same with the whites. These should just be specular highlights. They are, you can just see the red dot there because of the highlight marker is switched on. And immediately that looks so much better. I'm gonna take a really big brush, go all the way around the outside of the photograph and into here. Take my curve down. And this is getting towards more what I kind of envisaged when I actually took the photograph. Okay, so now I'm just going to add some grain now, again, big difference here between myself and Sarah's work. She likes medium grain, which is this one. I like the fast grain, which is this one, but I always back it off a little bit. Okay, let's zoom back out again. And then what I want to do now is because I've added the grain, it's kind of softened things a little bit in certain areas. So I want to add another curve. So I'm going to go back to my adjustment mask. 
I'm just going to click on that. There it is. So now I can add a nice curve just to get some contrast back again. And then finally, I'm just going to add another brush. We're just going to lighten her a little bit. And the other thing I'm just going to do, I'm just going to go and go back over these edges again. Just darken down a little bit more. Now I could go back into the the mask that I used earlier on and alter it again, but I always feel that it's just better just to add another mask on top, you know, because if you start going back and fiddling with stuff further down, anything you've done after that will be affected. So I just prefer to just stack the masks up rather than go back and try and adjust the mask earlier on. That's closer to where I want it to be. As ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the comments.